So far we've spent most of our time talking about alkenes. Um, and so now we're going to kind of review some of the reactions that we've already looked at with alkenes and see how they relate to alkynes. And the first one that we're going to look at is the hydrohalogenation reaction, right? So you're adding HCl or HBr across a pi bond. And of course this also works with alkynes. And so if I take um, an alkyne, so this um, is uh, three hexyne, and I react it with HCl, the same process, the same mechanism uh, occurs. I get <coughs> the reaction of this. Now, how's that taking place, right? So notice um, I get, uh, in this particular situation, an anti-addition reaction. So the chlorine and the hydrogen are adding anti to one another. If we think about the mechanism, we're going to, uh, you know, we, we can first think about the mechanism of an alkene addition. Um, so we get proton transfer and uh, the HCl bond breaks, right, and goes to the chloride. So if we did that, we would get something that looks like this. And the question is, does this form? The answer seems to be a little bit more complicated and you might be thinking to yourself, as always, right? Well, why is it a little bit more complicated? There, there's two factors. Number one, vinyl carbocations are less stable than even primary carbocations. So here we have a vinyl carbocation forming. And, and obviously, if, you know, I, I tell you never draw vinyl, car, uh, never draw primary carbocation, that means that you should never draw vinyl carbocations. The other thing is, if this carbocation was forming, then we wouldn't see any stereochemistry. So this particular intermediate, as a possibility, doesn't explain stereochemistry. It doesn't explain that anti-addition. So we have to think about the mechanism a little bit more in more detail. Okay. So obviously we have a pi bond and it's attacking the HCl and what else could happen to it? Well, we can think of it as something that looks like this, a two plus one addition where I, I have the hydrogen adding to that pi bond, but in reality, it's kind of, it's adding to the middle of that pi bond. So there's electrons that are kind of floating around and I don't have a distinct carbon-hydrogen bond forming. I simply have the hydrogen hovering around the pi system such that now chloride can attack. And when it attacks, then I can get the, um, you know, a, a breaking of that ring and a, a solid forming of now a carbon-hydrogen bond. So this is kind of similar to a hydronium ion. It's not quite as similar because the hydrogen doesn't have a pair of electrons around it, but really that's the only way that we can explain the stereochemistry uh, of this reaction, right? Because now the chloride has to, it's an SN2 reaction. I get an anti-addition uh, of the chloride relative to the hydrogen, and that explains the stereochemistry, okay? So, it's a little convoluted, but um, that again, we have to explain mechanisms based on the outcome of our products. And this is really the only way that we can do so. Now, one of the things that uh, we have to understand is if we're taking an alkyne and reacting it with HCl and forming a vinyl chloride, usually vinyl chlorides are still, they're actually fairly reactive with HX and can um, and, and can undergo another addition reaction because I still have a pi bond. Um, so I get my, my vinyl chloride reacting with HCl and what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to form a carbocation. That carbocation though, uh, what do we know about it? Well, we've seen this reaction, we've seen this type of carbocation before where you have a, a halogen connected to that carbon. So I'm going to redraw it. Um, so 
because I don't have enough space there. So here's that um, that carbocation. The chlorine has uh, three lone pairs of electrons. I can take one of those lone pairs, donate it to form a resonance structure um, of the carbocation to give me the um, positive charge on the chlorine. And now chloride can attack that carbon and displace the carbon-chlorine bond, and I get this. So notice uh, the chlorines are on the same carbon. We call these geminal dihalides. So when I react an alkyne with HCl in excess, I form a geminal dihalide. That's an important thing to understand, right? Now I know how to make geminal dihalides and I can make vicinal dihalides. Geminal dihalides and vicinal dihalides. So here I have an alkyne. I react it with uh, HCl in excess amount and I'm going to get my geminal dihalide. And notice the chlorines always go um, to the carbon that has an R group attached to them, right? Because um, uh, be, you know, due to uh, due to the regiochemistry of the reaction. Likewise, if I take a symmetrical um, alkyne, react it with eight, uh, HBr in excess, then I can, in this case, I can get the bromines adding on um, either carbon, but it doesn't really matter because it gives me the same product. And so I get a geminal dibromide in this case, right? So that's, uh, th that is the, the outcome, the product outcome of reacting an alkyne and undergoing a hydrohalogenation. Sometimes this is referred to as a double hydrohalogenation. The net product is a geminal dihalide. So that's an important thing to understand. When I react an alkyne with HX in excess, I get a geminal dihalide.